In the 1940s and 50s, everyone dreamed of having their own personal flying machine. And why not? You'd keep it in the garage or the backyard, hop in, start the engine, and off you'd go. In the early 50s, a government engineer named Charles Zimmerman had an idea. What if the rotors of a helicopter were put on the bottom of an aircraft? Then the pilot could steer the flying platform simply by shifting his weight from side to side. All sorts of models came out with names like Helovector, Aerocycle, Propcopter. There was only one tiny problem nobody seemed to notice. One wrong move and the pilot could fall through the rotors and end up as human gazpacho. These things were like flying vegematics. But one of them caught the U.S. Army's eye. This is the Hiller Flying Platform. This is probably the closest that anybody has come to developing a true magic carpet ride. The thinking went, you could put a soldier on the Hiller and he could zip across the battlefield. All you had to do was pull the cord and start her up, just like a lawnmower. Flying platforms offered the potential for freeing the infantrymen from the restrictions of the terrain. The flying platform consists of a large duct. Contained within the duct are the engines that power the main rotors that lift it. The Hiller used a ducted fan to give the vehicle lift, including two counter-rotating propellers. The duct eliminates the turbulence that would normally form at the tips of the rotor blades, making the propeller more efficient. To control the aircraft, the pilot would simply lean in the direction that he wished to travel. Lean right, go right, lean forward, go forward. Very simple in concept, but a little bit more difficult in execution. It just looks like it'd be a riot to, to be in this thing, and you could almost charge people to do this at a carnival. Just a great idea. 